If you have a website and you measure performance with some analytics or marketing tool, certain user interactions are more important than others. For example, a purchase or form submission is more important than most link clicks. That's where the concept of conversions becomes important. In this video, I will show you an example of conversion tracking with Google Tag Manager. Since conversions are the most important interactions on your website, usually they are related to form submissions or making purchases. Here I have a demo website with a newsletter form, and I want to track conversions when this form is submitted. In the context of this video, I will be working with Google Analytics 4, and they have two terms. One is conversion, and the other one is key event. In most cases, if you just want to highlight that a particular event is more important to you, that kind of event is called key event. And this is what we are going to track in this video. But if key event is later imported into Google Ads from your GE4 property, then that key event also becomes a conversion. On this demo website, I have a Google Tag Magic container installed. This is a very basic container. Inside this container, I have GA4 installed. If you have no idea how to install Google Analytics with Google Tag Manager, then I will post a link to a tutorial below this video. Every time when I want to track a form submission, first I have to inspect how that form behaves after the form is submitted. And I do that by enabling the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. Then I copy the URL of the form page, paste it right here and click connect. The preview mode has connected and here I will submit the form. And after the form submission, I am redirected to a thank you page. But this is just one of the ways how forms can behave. In other situations, the page will not reload, it will not redirect, it will just show the success message and that's it. Or maybe the form will do even something else. So different forms will require different tracking methods and I will post some additional resources below this video. But now let's focus on this particular form. When the visitor goes to a thank you page where the URL contains slash thank you slash, then I could send an event to Google Analytics 4. If I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager and then I select the container loaded, for example, on the page which is my thank you page, and then if I go to variables, I will see that there is a variable called page path and this is the value. So basically I could fire my Google Analytics event tag and I will create it a bit later when page path exactly matches thank you or contains thank you. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, triggers, then new trigger configuration and page view, for example. Here I want to activate this trigger just on some page views where page path, let's say equals thank you, exactly what I have in the preview mode. Then let's name this trigger and click save. The next step is to create a tag that will send the event to Google Analytics 4. Later, we will mark this event as a key event. Let's go to tags, then new tag configuration, Google Analytics and select GA4 event. Here we have to enter the measurement ID. This should be the same measurement ID that you have in your main Google tag in the list of tags. You can also find the measurement ID in your GA4 property by going to admin, then data streams and select your website data stream. This is your measurement ID that you should copy and paste it right here. Then you can enter the event name. A recommended event name for form submissions is generate lead. So if you want, you can enter that. You can also enter something else like form submission or newsletter sign up will also work just fine. If you have multiple newsletter forms on your website, then you could also send an event parameter, for example, form ID, and then here you could insert a variable, but in this case, I just have only one newsletter signup form. If you want to learn more about event tracking and parameters, then I will post another link below this video. Now let's remove this parameter, and then I will just add a trigger. So click anywhere in the triggering, and then page view, thank you. Then I will name this tag and click save. Now it's time to test if this is working. I will click preview to refresh the preview mode. It has connected. Here I am on the form page and I will submit the form and click subscribe. This is the thank you page. And on this thank you page on container loaded, because when you use the page view trigger, it fires on container loaded. Here is my 
tag. Currently in the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, there is a bug which causes the unknown tag type error sometimes. But this is not a problem. It's just how right now the preview mode shows this. Your tag still probably fired just fine. And then if you try to do this test, let's say in a couple of hours or maybe the next day, this issue should go away. But we are not done yet because just because the tag fired does not mean that the data was actually received by Google Analytics. That's why I will go to GA4. And then in the admin section, I will go to data display and debug view. And here I have the newsletter signup event. Right now, this is just a regular event because it has this blue icon. We haven't turned it into a conversion, which is right now known as key event. To do that, we have to go to key events in the admin section of Google Analytics, then click new key event and enter the event name that we just sent to Google Analytics for. In my case, that is newsletter underscore sign up exactly like this, and then click save. You have to do that as soon as possible because if you register a key event, let's say after a week, this will not fix your historical data. An event becomes a key event only after it is actually created and then new data that is collected will then be properly treated. Now we can do one more test. I will go to Google Tag Manager. Even though it's not necessary, I will just refresh the preview mode and I will submit the form again. Click subscribe. Here is the thank you page. And then here on the container loaded, my tag fired again. If I go to Google Analytics, then debug view, that newsletter signup event should appear. And here it is. This is now a key event because its icon is green. Sometimes debug view has some weird delays and certain events appear later. So if you don't see the event right away, you might need to wait five, 10 minutes and it might eventually appear somewhere right here. But right now, in my case, everything is working fine. This is a key event, also previously known as conversion. And once I made sure that everything is working fine, I can go to Google Tag Manager and publish these changes. I can do that by clicking Submit and then Publish. From this moment, the newsletter signup tracking would be enabled for all website visitors. And then whoever lands on my thank you page, this event would be tracked. Now, there are some potential issues with this. For example, if a visitor reloads the page, then the conversion will be fired again. But this goes out of scope of this lesson. I can just tell you right now the direction, what you should investigate next. So one of the potential solutions would be that if a visitor lands on this thank you page, you temporarily store a cookie in the visitor's browser. And then if the visitor later revisits this page, you check if cookie exists. If yes, then you no longer fire that GA4 event tag. I will post a link to a blog post about cookies in the description of this video. Also, I explain this more thoroughly with videos examples in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tech Match course. You will find a link to it below the video as well. So this was the process of conversion tracking in general. You have some important event, you then fire a tag when that event happens, for example, the form is submitted, and then if needed, you might have to do some additional configuration in the tool. For example, in GA4, you have to register key events. In case of other tools, for example, Google Ads, you would first need to create a conversion in Google Ads, then get certain things like conversion ID, and then you would need to create another tag in Google Tag Manager. So an example could look like this, where you have Google Ads and then conversion tracking, and then you would need to fill in the information right here. And if you're dealing with even some other tool, then their instructions will also probably differ. So you would usually need to check their documentation or maybe some other tutorials specific to those particular tools that you're working with. And that's how you can track conversions with Google Tag Manager. First, you should decide which events are most important to you. Then configure tags, triggers, and variables to capture them. The configuration of a tag will differ depending on which platforms are you using. For example, with Google Analytics, you have to send an event and then mark that event as a key event in the GA4 interface. With Google Ads, you would have to create the conversion in the interface first and only then configure the tag in Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. 
that will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.